a heart. Good morning, church. Ellen, you want your cell phone? Thank you, Ellen Wadding, our Christian Education Director. Kids, you're going to have a great day. Reagan, are, are, are you going back to your... Where, where, I don't know. Um, heart. When the Wizard of Oz books were written in the 30s, it was because people had had a storm hit them, twisting their life apart, known as the Depression. And it was written as children books to remind people that there were values, that there were things in life that held study, even though you'd been through a storm. People were wondering if they could even think through what was happening if they only had a brain. And sometimes I think that we need to remember that if only we, we sometimes say that we, if only I had the mind of Christ and Yet the Holy Spirit in Christ Jesus has given us the mind of Christ. The tin man said, if I only had the heart, if I only had a heart, and sometimes we say, if only I had the heart of Jesus. And the lion said, if only I had courage. He said, I don't feel very brave at all, and that's just, I'm not just feeding you a lion there. Nothing. And Dorothy just wanted to go home. Because she needed to remember that God is always present. Therefore, we always have a home. You see... This morning, we, and, and, and Sean, I'm going to be getting to the scripture in a, morning, in a moment, so just, let's, let's keep this up here. And I want you to turn to, if you have a, a Bible or a device, or you, there's Bibles in the pew, I want you to turn to John 21. Because we're going to start with the first, first four, I'm just going to talk through the first 14 verses, what happened. This story takes place a couple, few weeks after Jesus' resurrection. At Jesus' resurrection, Mary Magdalene was told by the angel, Now you tell my disciples that I'm going on to Galilee and I'll meet up with them there. And so they went up to Galilee and they were waiting. They were waiting and they, they didn't know what was happening next. And one day they were just, as dusk was coming, which is when they would go fishing because... They fished at night. They would put a torches out, out over the bow, bow of the bow of the boat, and and the fish would be attracted, and that's how they would catch fish. But nothing happened. And as da as dawn was breaking, they were gathering in empty nets, and they saw a figure on the beach, about a football field's length away, and and this figure yells out to them, "Hey!" Throw, did you get anything? No, it was a wasted night of fishing. Well, throw your nets off on the other side. And so they did, and, and they pulled in many fish, around 153. And, and as they were struggling with the nets, Peter suddenly, something clicked in his brain, something clicked in his brain that this miracle would happen. And he says to the guys, he says to Andrew or James or John, he says, that's Jesus. And he jumps in the water and he swims to shore and, and the boat comes along. They couldn't get the net into the boat, especially since Peter had jumped into the water and swimming. So they just dragged the boat behind them, the, the net behind the boat as they made it. And, and they walked up and they, they knew it was Jesus. And he had a fire going and a few fish on the fire and he said, go, go bring some more of the fish you caught. And Peter, just sort of, in my mind's eye, he, he just sort of sat there and, and thought, because in the way, in, in, on the way in as he was swimming, suddenly he realized some things. He wanted to see Jesus, but then he remembered that the last time he really had a chance to talk with Jesus was at supper when he said he'd never deny him. And, 
then he did deny him. And even when Jesus came and, and showed his hands and feet, Peter stayed in the background, didn't say a word. And he's swimming in to see Jesus. That means there's going to be an encounter. And, and he was trying to think, you know, Jesus, last time we really had a chance to talk, things weren't so good between you and me. And there they were. And they ate. Which is when we pick up with chapter four, verse uh, 15 of chapter 21 in John. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? And Peter said to Jesus, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. A second time Jesus said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter replied, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, then tend my sheep. And he said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Well, Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And Peter replied, Lord, you know everything and you know that I love you. And Jesus then said to him, feed my sheep. Very truly, Peter, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not want to go. And Jesus said this in order to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. And after this, Jesus said to Peter, follow me. Follow me. The tin man felt hollow because he wanted a heart. And I can only imagine that Peter also felt hollow because of things that had come to pass between him and Jesus in those, those weeks. And, and he wanted to, that, that, that relationship with Jesus that he once knew. He wanted... He wanted that, that heart of Jesus to, to reach out to him again. To, he wanted to know that he was okay, that he was still loved, that he, was, that he mattered. That he mattered to Jesus in the kingdom. And, and that's what he was looking for. They had gone back to their apprenticed professions. From the way that the scripture reads there in John 21, verse 1. It sounds like they're just sitting around and it would be normally fishing time. And they said, well, I'm going fishing. Let's go. And that's when Jesus shows up. And, and Peter, I, I think, was, was feeling hollow because he, he knew his sin. He knew that he was... Lacking, He knew that he had denied Jesus, that, that he had said he didn't know him, he didn't stand up for him. He, he was weak. And what do you do? His heart was broken by what he had done. But Jesus had, had a, had, was there for a purpose. Jesus was there to reach out to the disciples. Jesus was there to let them know that the mission continues, that the kingdom still needs to be built, that the kingdom is still within them. And so they meet on the beach. And Peter's sitting there, if only I could reclaim that, that, that relationship, if only I could understand that God's heart still will beat in me. He was concerned about his sin, and certainly denying Jesus was a, was a scandalous thing to do, a scandalous, life-saving thing to do. And he felt guilty. But then just... Jesus kept something going. He kept talking then to Peter about love and about heart and about purpose. Do you love me? Yeah, tend my feet, sheep. Tend my sheep. Do you love me? Yeah, feed my lambs. Do you love me? 
Lord, you know everything. I, I love you. I mean, isn't this hard enough? And feed my sheep. You see, what Jesus was after was, was helping Peter understand. Peter was he, helping Peter understand that he still mattered, that he still was valued. And, and what happened to get there? It was a fishing story. I believe that what happened with the fish jolted Peter enough to start seeking that relationship again. Because if you look, and if you still have your Bibles with you, or, or the, a Bible with you or your device, look up John, or Luke, excuse me, Luke chapter 5. Because what you're going to see there is something that happened between Jesus and Peter and Andrew, James and John approximately three years earlier. Jesus needed a boat to go out a little bit ways, ways from store to, to speak over the wave, to speak over the water like an amplification system. And, and after he taught, they, he, he started talking to them and he said, how was, how was fishing last night? Because they were cleaning their nets. And they said it was a bust. And he said, well, okay, well, let's go out again and throw your nets out again. And and they caught a lot of fish. And, and the story is, is this memory is coming back into to Peter's mind because what Jesus said after all that and they caught fish and they were worshiping him, he said, follow me. And then on this day, on the beach, when they were having breakfast, after they had had all, this fe all these fish come in, he once again says to Peter, follow me. That this meant that there was reconciliation and redemption and renewal and restoration and reconnection and resurrection all tied up into one. That here in this spot, here in this spot, Jesus reminded him with that jolt of a memory that he was loved. That Jesus had a heart for him. And was calling him to have a heart for the sheep, continuing heart for the sheep. So I see two things here. One is that Jesus has a heart for you and me. And sometimes we, we forget that. Maybe it's because we, we have done something horrible. Or sometimes, you know what? We're not doing anything horrible, but we're not really doing what God is, is calling for us to do, or we're really not looking forward to where Jesus is leading. It's, it's that old thing that the word sin comes from the old archery term, that if you pull back the bow and let the arrow fly and it falls short to the ground, or if it's like my golf ball and it goes way over there, The term is, I sinned, I fell short, I, I wasn't heading toward the target. Peter was no longer heading toward the target. And so Jesus called him home. The heart of Jesus is to always call us home. The other part of the, that I want to, that I want to look about the heart of Jesus is that Jesus wants us to have the same heart as he is. There's an old phrase, an old phrase, Lord, let my heart be broken by the things that break your heart. God calls us to have the heart of Jesus so that we won't be hollow. To, to have that, that kind of heart where we're calling people home, when we're calling people to... to, to Reminding them that there's a God who loves them without condition. And to behave toward them with love. There was a man, a, a Christian man, loved Jesus, active in his church. Was out in California, Los Angeles to be exact, on a business trip. And he was walking downtown Los Angeles 
he was from a much smaller city and he was looking around at everything and and a homeless guy walked up to him. It was a warm day in, in Los Angeles and this guy was dressed in several heavy coats and looked and smelled like a man who was in walking around the streets on a warm day in Los Angeles wearing many heavy coats. And the guy walked up to the visitor in town and was sipping coffee and he said, it's a great day, it's a beautiful day, isn't it? He goes, yeah. It's a great day and I have a great cup of coffee. This is probably the best cup of coffee I've had in a long time. Oh, great, Where, where'd you get it? Well, I went around the corner. Here, just take a sip. And the visitor to the city said, okay, what do I do? I don't want to be rude, nor do I really want to take a sip. But something inside was jolting and was, was nudging him, and so he took the cup. He said, well, thank you very much. He took a sip, and it was very good coffee. And he handed it back to the man and said, that is great coffee. What, why would you share a cup of such great coffee? The man said, well, it seems to me that when you have something this good, you just got to share it. And the man well, in some ways, that's his fishing story. It jolted him and reminded him. It reminded him of the love of God for him and for all people. And gave him a new sense of purpose, that not just to, to be involved in the church, but to reach out for people, no matter who they are. And not hold them at a distance, but be involved with their lives as much as they, he was able. I guess that was the fish story that, that made him remember and realize that God had a claim on his life. That God would nurture and challenge. And he was grateful. That's the goal, friends, is to have the heart of Jesus. And, and, and like the tin man said, if only I had the heart of if only I had a heart. And do you remember at the end of the movie, Dorothy and Toto too are getting ready to leave, go back to Kansas. And he says, now I know I have a heart because it's breaking. Now I know I have a heart. Peter was able to come back. He was able to understand that Jesus wanted him back because there was something that jolted the memory of God's love. We call it a God sighting. And my prayer for you is, in fact, this is the assignment, start looking for God sightings. See where God is showing up. See where God is nudging us or reminding us or calling to us this week. And may our hearts be broken by the things that break God's heart. And then may we do something about it. For God is still asking us to build the kingdom. And that's a blessing. Amen? Almighty God, hear us as we pray. We want to submit to you not out of fear or out of obligation but because we know you love us. And when we have love that great we just have to share it. In Jesus name. Amen.